Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the approximately weekly show that delves into the low-grade lunacy, wacky weirdness, and unusual unmentionables of one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he's often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. This show is all about trying to understand him and his zany conspiracy theories. But sometimes the best way to understand Mark is not to look directly at him, but to consider what his friends have to say. And today I'm sure you'll be overjoyed to hear we have another Sabrina episode. But, uh, hmm. She's got a bit of a bone to pick with me. Sabrina is not happy. Kind of like dildo-headed, orange-shirted dude who's riding my coattails now. He's got like a thousand people on his channel. He was making fun of Mark Steele, and now I'm over there too. Orange-shirted, dildo-head guy? That, that would be me. But uh, fortunately, I own more than one shirt. But none of that is important for today. We're going to begin by allowing Sabrina to introduce herself and explain just what she's upset about. I am not a whistleblower. I'm a pissed off mother who was a former network engineer for an internet service provider, the back end of Northcom. And I don't appreciate when you make fun of me if you can't put up the IEEE because like I keep saying, obviously people don't know that the aura is a body part. If they did, they'd be pissed. It's really uncanny the way Sabrina can look into my soul and know precisely who I am and what I'm doing. I literally set this channel up to prevent people from knowing that there is a human body part called the aura. And the way I was going to do that was by uh, making some satire and comedy that mocked the entire notion. And you're out there doing satire and comedy to prevent people from knowing that they have a body part attached to the cloud with COVID on a data network that's looking for their body control unit. Don't take my word for it. Electronic Integrated Disease Surveillance System for the CDC. COVID Body Area Network, CovW Band. This is going to be another one of those episodes where Sabrina drops truth bomb after truth bomb. I, I stand as much chance of coming out of this unscathed as a, a, a salad bowl in an avalanche. It's not looking good for me. Already, she has deployed the, the winning strategy of revealing the COVID body area network, which I think refers to a, a paper that's published on PubMed describing the use of wearable body sensors that might be used to detect people who have the, the early symptoms of the COVID virus or, or something similar to that. It's, it's, a, it's a wild and conclusive argument that has made me feel like the idiot that I almost certainly am. Why do I keep coming back to this? Why do I put myself through this terrible, shameful humiliation? at the hands of the, the more seasoned debater, the more informed person. That, of course, is Sabrina. We have medical documents showing that the wireless was looking through the electricity of our muscles, galvanic energy, ring a bell, human body communication. That's what they call it now. Yeah, it was there in the 1800s, and it was there in the 1920s. And when I was born in 1979, the Internet of Things was already up and running. This revelation rewrites the history of the Internet as we know it. Sabrina has revealed that the Internet of Things was already present in 1979, the year of her birth, which is astonishing because that is four years before the invention of TCPIP in 1983. So how that was possible? I don't know. But remember, Sabrina is a former network operations technician, which means she must know about these things. I have no reason nothing on earth would make me doubt her. That's what the beacon enabled Mac ID on me was for your BLE type of little corridors, mathematical little buoys like what you put in the water. Oh. Scatterers, multi-input, multi-output. Yeah, yeah, see, there's a mathematical computation for all of this, inclusive to the Doppler, watching you sit, stand, which we've now up 
incorporated into postural wireless body area network protocols. Sabrina's last line of argumentation is a sort of argument from Technobabble. She's using words that are real words, referring to actual concepts in computing and networking. But she's not using them in a way that makes any kind of coherent sense. She's stringing together these words almost randomly. She's, she's juxtaposing these words in a way that no actual computing engineer or, or networking expert would ever do. She, she's coming out with concepts that are purely gibberish. At least that's how it sounds to me. Or maybe she's engaged in some kind of complicated science fiction LARP. She's proposing a world in which any human being can be remote controlled simply from an app on an iPhone. That we can't just level with people about what we're selling apps to people to do, like the Australian police do with their phone. Oh no, that's from the 70s. Make you pee, here's an orgasm, electrocute you. We didn't see that last Halloween. Look at the phone, twitch, and go in a circle. Oh no, no. Those apps aren't available to any little fucking nerd out there that wants to figure out how to go peer to peer on just some galvanic energy, HBC, human body communication. This is actually the reason that I know that Sabrina is wrong. It has nothing to do with my knowledge of the history of computing or network engineering. I don't need a, a diploma in the ISO networking stack to understand why this is complete rubbish. It's simply that if there was an iPhone app that could remotely trigger an orgasm in another human being, don't you think we'd be using it all the time? If you could just press a button to have an orgasm, we'd be doing that to the exclusion of just about every other human activity except the most basic human needs. And the fact that we aren't, I think, is certain absolute cast iron proof that Sabrina's orgasm button unfortunately, tragically, does not exist. We have biofrequency weapons. Those are available to apps on phones. People don't know that. <clears throat> they still think that these plasma weapons are sci-fi. Oh, they can't read my mind. Meanwhile, we got doctors and nurses going to neuromodulation clinics in Canada, playing volleyball, having dinner, and learning how to program the app on their phone for their patients because it's their job. Sabrina's conspiracy theory is a technological update of the age-old targeted individual conspiracy theory. The idea that malign forces, whether witchcraft or cybernetic biosensors, are, are seeking to remote control the individual. And there's a, a shadowy cartel or a cabal of individuals who have access to this technology, whether they be witches or Cisco technologies. It's basically the same conspiracy theory. It's just been updated for the modern era. And now you have human body communication with a 20 year old optic network system with your virtual light communication and the body area networks. It's already sitting there. It's been there for 20 years. One clear difference though between Sabrina and Mark Steele is that I think Sabrina genuinely believes what she's saying. Whereas I think Mark Steele is obviously a grifter. He says things that he knows will be able to inspire panic and fear in profoundly vulnerable people. Like Sabrina, in fact. Mark Steele is uh, clearly an example of a narcissistic manipulator, whereas Sabrina looks like the sort of person who may have been the victim of some kind of narcissistic manipulation. And I think in her videos, we can see genuine terror. That the real fucking issue is that some bitch got my DNA on a remote and I don't have anything, nothing that I can do because I am sold. Pay for fucking play in my country. One way or I don't think it matters really whether Sabrina believes what she's saying or not. I, I think she does believe it. What matters though is that She's saying things that sound convincing to somebody who has no knowledge of technology. To somebody who has zero knowledge in computing, Sabrina sounds just like an expert. She, she sounds like a Star Trek character who's remodulating the warp phase manifold and inserting a tachyon beam to repolarize the, the sublight assembly. It, 
somebody who has no technological knowledge, perhaps has no framework to determine the difference between RMS or Donald Knuth and Sabrina. As far as they're concerned, Sabrina talks and walks like a computer scientist, so she must be one. All of our politicians, everybody, mouth shut because of these systems right here, dual use all this time. That should be an intellectual discussion, which I have turned it into by sticking assiduously to cybersecurity and emergent technology. Now, if any of you could get up here and debunk me rather than sit there and waste time making fun of me, taking me out of context, not leaving any appropriate IEEE indicators for what this technology is, that's a problem. This isn't a debunking channel, and I'm certainly not going to be showing any IEEE indicators, uh, whatever they are. But uh, I think we can all find Sabrina's message truly sobering. There's a human body part called the aura. It has been used to remote control human beings at a cellular level. We are being interfaced via the means of a radio frequency connection to this aura. And people are trying to use satire and comedy to deprive you of this knowledge. It's a truly shocking, mesmerizing thought. It's suggestive of a conspiracy so vast and expansive that uh, it, it beggars belief. And yet the strange thing is, according to Sabrina, just about everybody in the computing industry and most of the medical industry are in on the conspiracy. And yet nobody talks about it. it it's, a, it's a truly brain dizzying criminal act. We have biosensors inside of every single citizen since 2005. But while you're busy running narratives and psychological operations, everybody dead. And to you, it's all a big joke. I grew up watching this technology be built. You're just finding out about it now. If I were you, that is something I would definitely be taking into consideration. And you have one week to take Sabrina's wise and sobering words into consideration, because that's the amount of time it will take me to scour the internet yet once again for some of the zaniest, wildest conspiracy videos, edit them into handy bite-sized chunks, and then present them to you in the form of a YouTube-based digest with appropriate commentary from myself. That's going to happen whether or not we are controlled by our biofield. Well, I hope so. See you in a week.